recording. Welcome everybody. We're here to talk about website analytics today, specifically for our um, Lean Wisconsin, which is IFLIS and Northern Waters and WVLS websites. We're going to be talking about Matomo um, and Matomo, especially versus Google Analytics, and then how you can see um, information from Matomo, connect Matomo on your website, and how you can access if you have a username and login um, for access more detailed analytics uh, through the Matomo analytics uh, web page. I'm starting right now on the Connect Matomo dashboard documentation, which is available at um, training.libraryswin.org. I'm going to throw that in the chat real quick. Um, the Connect Matomo dashboard, this is a stub of a documentation because this only covers the plugin and dashboard side of the uh, of the Matomo analytics. It's we're not gonna. This isn't going to go into the dashboard because not everybody has access to the dashboard yet. I will fill this out more as we get there. Um, man, and we're talking about website accessibility a minute ago. I apologize the how light this um, text is here, but that is actually something that I can't control yet. Um, it's part of the WordPress itself um, package. So we were talking about accessibility yesterday. This is not a good example of it. Please don't do what I'm doing uh, and we will get better as time goes on. So let me um, talk a little bit about Connect Matomo. Connect Matomo is a plugin that you will find installed on your website that takes your website tracking information and feeds it back into a database. For, um, for WVLS and IFLIS and Northern Waters, you guys, we all have these dashboards. So why Matomo? Um, we have these dashboards that if I click on one, it gives us real-time statistics about how our libraries are being used. So you can see checkouts, check-ins, um, ILS use, e-material use on Libby and OverDrive, our technology statistics here for wireless sessions and computer sessions, and we also have website statistics. This information is coming from that Matomo plugin on your website. So um, that is feeding it back into the Matomo oh, dashboard. And then Chris has worked some amazing magic in the background that connects all of your library information back into your systems dashboard. This has been going on for quite a while now. And except for Northern Waters that came in just a little bit uh, more recently, everybody um, who has had a website with us has been connected to the dashboard through this. We host a local Matomo server, server, so we already have the infrastructure in place for this, and that um, connects into the physical infrastructure for these dashboards. The other piece, um, like some people will ask, why not Google Analytics? Um, Matomo is actually a not, not from the United States. It is hosted, I, I, I want to say Spain, but I could be wrong. Um, don't quote me on that because I think I'm conflating it with another company. They are in the European Union. So they have had to um, comply with uh, privacy policies in the European Union much more than what the United States basically has very little for privacy policies. Um, so Matoma Analytics has been under um, has been general data protection regulation compliant, which is the EU standard uh, for years. And Google Analytics is getting dragged into this now. Um, and now you, if you look for Google Analytics, they're actually rolling it into G, uh, GA4, which is a compliant product, but they're behind um, on that privacy standard. So part of Matomo was that they were a much high, they had a much higher standard of privacy protection for people visiting our websites for much longer. So we have had, um, this is why we have the Matomo versus having Google Analytics is um, we were doing a little bit more work to assure uh, visitor privacy on our websites. 
because we have Matomo now and it's working for us and it does connect to the dashboard and it's been quite a bit of work to maintain that, we will stay with Matomo rather than transferring over to something like GA4. And it's also not advisable. So if you want, if you're going to go into your website and add your own tracker code, um, it is not advisable to have two trackers on your website. We have Matomo. It feeds our data dashboards. Um, don't try to go in and put in a Google Analytics or a GA4 um, tracker code onto your CSS file or anywhere else um, in your header or footer on your website because it can conflict and your data may not be accurate at the end of the day. So that's why Matomo. Um, what is Matomo? So we have, uh, or what, what can you get out of Matomo? So if you are just on your website, so I'm looking at the TB Scott library website here. Um, it, all of this should be pretty pr much the same on all of your websites is you have your dashboard and up in this top corner, you have the connect Matomo um, linked for settings here for you. When you click on this, you are going to see a very basic snapshot overview of some of the statistics that your um, that the tracker that the plugin is is tracking for you. And actually, why don't I before I dive into that, I'll just show you real quick under plugins. You have the Connect to Matomo right here, and this is that where the plugin lives, and that is what feeds into the dashboard um, here. So this is pulling your basic website statistics. This is a really nice snapshot overview. If you are signed in as a, as an administrator, which almost I'd say 99% of you are all administrators on your website. When you sign in, you can click on the Connect Matomo and you will see this basic overview. This, um, the left-hand column is currently set up for whatever the default or whatever the, a certain period of time that comes up in settings that we'll talk about later. And this is where Connect Matomo on your website gets clunky. Um, you don't have a ton of control over what your time period that you're seeing here is, but you can change it. We'll go into it in a minute. But you'll see your website visitors over the last 12 weeks here. We've got week by week number of visitors. And then as we just continue down this left-hand column, um, you have, when it says browsers, it doesn't mean um, people coming and looking at your shelves. It means what are they using to access your website? And so it has a list of internet browsers. In this case, Chrome is, it looks like it's taking up and making up about a third of website visitors. Uh, we've got mobile Safari as the next big chunk. Um, Chrome Mobile, Microsoft Edge, Firefox is actually surprisingly not one of the leading ones. Usually that's a higher number than the Edge. Um, and some of the iOS um, and some and Samsung, the mobile browsers. Yes, Trevor. Is it tracking staff computers as well as non-staff? Yes, we, so do be aware, we have not gone into all of the websites to, uh, to tell Matomo to not count certain IP addresses. My IP address, um, is included in this right now to not track my IP address. Uh, but yes, currently like public computers, if you have your web page, uh, if you have your homepage up there, it's a really good point that um, if you have your homepage up on your public computers and it's coming up, you're gonna be getting website hits from that. I was just looking at the Avery one and 7% of the traffic is coming from Microsoft Edge. And I'm betting a lot of that's me. Oh, <laughs> use Edge by default. And it could be that if library staff might be using Edge more um, because, you know, that or people at home, you know, they just don't install another browser. And so you don't know. Yeah, yeah. I use Edge more um, on my computer here. And I can tell you the reason why Chrome is so huge is because, yeah, all of the desk computers and all of the public computers, those are the main things that people will use. So, yeah. So, yeah. That's why it's so high. <laughs> So yeah, good to bear that in mind is like how much of this is in library traffic. Well, and maybe we, we can could go down. figure out the IP addresses of all our staff computers and public computers and deal with that at some point. So this may be something, a project um, down the road as we get more familiar with um, okay. settings within to like go in and just a whitelist all of the um, 
all of the library IP addresses and see if we can do that. Just a thought. Thank you. Yeah, good question. Um, so here might be even another way, Chris, to like figure it out at TV Scott, um, which, which version of Chrome um, is actually, you know, so here you've got your Chrome, but you have your Chrome mobile also, um, or which this, this really kind of gets down, you know, like maybe an older version of a, uh, this kind of gives you a, a heads up, like are people using outdated um, browsers? Are they trying to <laughs> see Netscape? pop up here or something, and they might not be getting the best user experience um, if your website is very, very uh, graphics or kind of built for the latest and greatest. Somebody with an older operating system or older browser, less updated browser might not be able to access it so much. This also starts to give you more um, detail about the idea that people are, whether they're accessing it using a mobile browser, which is a different experience and you need to, Divi is a responsive uh, design website or website designer um, uh, platform, but to bear in mind um, the mobile access experience. Resolutions, uh, remember that with responsive design, um, what you see is not always what somebody else gets. So just looking at how people, what size screen and um, how many pixels. So what quality are they looking at your website with? And then I think um, probably the most important one here is actually uh, the type of access that we're recording. So are people accessing it through desktop? or smartphone. And notice here, this, um, I notice with our more rural libraries, the ones that I've glanced at, it tends to weigh much more heavily to desktop access. Um, but here I'm seeing with TV Scott and Merrill, a slightly larger library in a more rural, uh, urban-ish environment than some, than maybe like Western Taylor County. Uh, I, we're getting closer to a 50-50 um, with a smartphone versus a desktop. And then you've got your tablet you actually have phablet users um, and something that is blocked enough. I love the car browser, like people who might be accessing your, your website through the car. And then it'll, it'll drill down as much as to models. So a generic desktop model is 50% um, at TV Scott, but then you have uh, almost a quarter using an iPhone and then a generic desktop um, on Apple and then breaking it down a little bit there. And then operating systems, uh, Windows, again, almost 50%, but then iOS making up again, a, probably a quarter, Android, and then a Mac and a, and a little bit of Linux sneaking in there. And then you can even dig down into some more system details. Is it Windows 10 or Windows 11? Um, and you know, so what kind of experience are users getting? Geography is uh, an interesting thing. It's not always specific enough. I know I, a lot of times when I'm um, working here, it, it, or you know, it's like I it might say that my my city. I love um, WVLS libraries. Often say they're in Rib Lake. Uh, so even no, even if you're in I don't know Forest County or in Crandon, it says you're in Rib Lake. So it's just because of how our servers track. But this is a really interesting way to kind of see where people's IP addresses are registering to. And then there's also the countries, which here is mostly the United States, but a user from France and a user from Philippines, when you start seeing the Russia numbers pop up there, it gets a little more unnerving. But um, so, so far I haven't seen, actually, surprisingly, I haven't seen too much of that, so. Now I have a question for you. Like mm -hmm. The masking software that people use to hide their location, could that result in some of these interesting countries? <laughs> it could. It entirely could. Or it could be the reverse. It could be that somebody is VPNing back into the United States, you know, so like mm -hmm. they may actually have more uh, malicious traffic than we think, but they're using um, a di disguised way to like look like they're United States too. Yeah, because uh, some of the countries, it's always like, Vietnam is on our website. Interesting. <laughs> and that's, it's always, there's another good discussion for um, worldwide internet traffic and, and whether they're bots. There is mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> bots and web crawlers and things too that do access websites. 
I do not know how Matomo, if they do anything to screen out web, what they know are web crawlers because um, Google and Bing and DuckDuckGo will send their uh, machine bots out to know, to look and see what's out on the web so they can get those in search results. Um, I do not know how Matomo or the even Google Analytics interacts with that. Is, is that a website hit or not? Um, then if we bump over to this right-hand side, now you're getting into your current week. And again, I'll show you real quick how to change some of these settings is pretty limited. But um, being able to look at visitors, unique visitors, page views, and this is all by the current week. So, um, and I think current week literally means current week. It doesn't mean last seven days. Uh, I will show you again where you can change a few of those settings. By and, belts count, you mean, is that people who came to one page and left? Yes. So they come in and they don't go to another page. That's literally... It doesn't mean um, like email bounces means it never got through. Bounce count just means they came in and they left without ever going to another web page in your website. More important for e-commerce where they're like, but, but, but you didn't buy this thing. But it also can be important for us because they might come to the page and then not find what they want and just leave. Um, so most people here are TV Scott uh, homepage. Again, this might be conflated because if it's on public computers, um, it might just be sitting there and registering as a as an access. Uh, so but our, our public computers actually automatically go to all the web links for everyone page. Okay. So, so that's I'm always looking at that number and going, okay, I, I'm pretty sure I know what those are. That. There you go. Okay, so, and that's like, I think uh, at, at Demer, uh, it must be similar to what we had where we had email. So you had web links for everyone and we had popular email um, logins or like popular email sites. Because everybody always wanted to know, how do I get to my Gmail? We're not nice. It just comes up with a search page. <laughs> <laughs> so that's um, that, or if, it's, if it opens to your catalog, that would be another thing that you might see a lot. Um, Refers, so this is where traffic is coming from. Um, it looks like people are coming to the library through the city of Merrill, um, through your library catalog. So they might be searching in the catalog and they end up back up on your website. Um, the uh, Lincoln County um, is also, it. and then whatever this scrub.sourcescrub.com. Usually when I look at these, these are junk sites. Don't search them directly, or I would do this in an incognito browser if you're going to like, what is this scrub source scrub.com? I would open a browser that is in incognito mode um, or doesn't track history, just in case it is like a malicious site. Uh, plugins that, they, that um, people have or have been accessing search data, and then you don't have any um, for the current week search data. I'm going to quickly show you, and again, this is, I'm not going to dwell on this because I did break this down in this, um, like how to change this date, this um, date range view, which is basically the only thing you can do. If you come into settings and connect to Matomo down here, this will open up. Maybe this will open up the settings for the Connect Matomo itself and you click in show statistics. You notice that it's coming up as the default date is current week. You can change this to current month, last month. I um, This will change that uh, the, the date range that shows up in that uh, right hand column in your, in the right-hand column on that. So why don't I bring this up in? Let's see. So right now it's set to current week and visitors last 12 weeks. If I change this to last month and save changes, then this is going to change it from last 12 weeks to last 12 months of visitors. And you have your visitor overview for the last month. So this is one change you can make. The other change under show statistics is um, 
you can't, oh, you can show per, per post stats. So I'll apply this and I'll show you what that means. So I'm just gonna set this to last 90 days. And now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna open up um, my posts. So let's look at the um, close for staff development. And when I scroll down here, now I have a little Connect Matomo uh, chart saying that one person saw, went and read the, um, the post about closed for staff development on here. And that might be, it might be that they got it out of the blurb and they didn't have to go to read it, or it might be that nobody even noticed that you guys were closed. I have a feeling that's gonna be very eye-opening when I go to look at that and be like, why am I putting stuff out here? No one looks at this. That nobody's seeing. Well, let's look at the donate to the, the donate to the library has been up there since November thirteenth, twenty twenty three. And it's not turned on by default, or did you do something? I'm sorry. Okay, so let me back up. And again, this if you go to I put this in chat. Um, I'm just going to throw this up. All of this is. Um, oh, okay. All right. In this in this place, it does talk. It goes through like what settings to change. Um, so showing the statistics for individual posts is right here. And if you scroll down and you select that, um, and so again, that's under show statistics, show post uh, show per post stats, and I just chose the last ninety days. And now we're looking at the donate to the public library. Or donate to the library post that he has that Chris has on here. This one has had 15 visitors, 15 unique visitors. Um, but they didn't spend as they spent unrecorded time and whatever that means as far as unrecorded time on there. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this could be eye-opening. Are they even maybe they're not clicking through two posts at all? Um, maybe whether they're getting what they need just by they never have to click on the read more. Well, or, yeah, I do try to make the excerpt part of it pretty, you know, so that way they don't really have to. But mm -hmm. yeah, you you know. <laughs> I kind of got to wonder. <laughs> so on that note, let's go take a look at. Um, I'm going to pull up TV Scott here to be less confusing. TV Scott. So. For those of you that got your, um, because you were here yesterday or because I figured you'd be interested, some of you have your login to the website version. So this is the analytics.iflisweb.org. Don't be, for anybody from WVLS or Northern Waters, don't feel like this um, because it says IFLIS that it doesn't pertain to you, it actually does. Um, but IFLIS started this and um, we just all jumped onto their bandwagon. This is the major dashboard for the website, for your website. And some of you have logins, a few of you don't have logins for this yet. If you're interested, either throw it into chat or send me a ticket saying that you do want your login to your website. Because right now you can see, um, you can see your Connect Matomo stats here, but as we discussed, that's pretty limited. This is gonna give you much, much more detailed view, and it's gonna give you much more ability to choose your dates, times, when you want to know about what you know about. Um, I'm not gonna go, I'm gonna let most of you spend some time um, digging through this for yourself. There is also a really nice video, Connect Matomo has some nice tutorials that you can watch to get some specific stats. Um, there are, there's ways to do ranges on this and then you can get some reporting out of this if you need to do it. What I need to tell you though, is some of these things like heat maps, I think everything from maybe even goals, funnels, forms, media, AV tests, heat maps, all of these things down here are uh, part of the premium package, which we do not currently have. Uh, we just have the free package. So you can see your visitors, your behavior, and I think acquisition, but I think goals, 
oh no maybe you can you can still do goals uh but once we get down into funnels now this is into the paid features so we're going to basically going to be looking at visitors behavior um and acquisition and goals so for visitors it's going to give you your overview of um your visitors for the it looks like the last week or so you can change your time periods. Um, you can do day, month, year. So this goes back um, to, this has April, 2022 up through basically today, as far as your visitors go. You can um, make some segments um, of visits, like right now it's on all visits, uh, but we could do some segmenting here. Uh, you can pick your specific date range of visitors. This is going to give you the visitors for this um, period of time, which is March 1st to March 21st. Your um, visit logs, so you can actually see individual visitors. But um, and and this would be a way where you can start to look at it and see like some of these IP addresses are triggering for me is saying, oh, that's an in-library access. Um, and that may be something that we can come back later. Your real-time visitors, your real-time maps. So you see where visitors are actively act asking. So somebody over in the Philippines, apparently, is looking at the TP Scott Library website. I don't know if that's a real human or not, but um, you get your locations. Now you have your breakdown on devices. And again, this is all by selecting the time period. So you, you can do different time periods on that. The software, you get a much more granular look at the software than you do on your dashboard and you can select your um, time periods. The time of day that people are visiting your website and by the site's time zone. So you can do some breakdowns here. Um, and you can export. So if you're doing a, a like a board report or something, you can export these as images and just plunk them right into your board report. Um, you can just you can and you might be able to do some different. Uh, it's just very similar to what the data dashboard here. If you haven't noticed on your data dashboard that IFLIS and WVLS and Northern Waters have to, that you can change the view of um, of how the data appears here. It's very similar for the Matomo dashboard that you can change how the data, um, you know, how the data views. One more person coming in here, just a second. There. So you've got, you've got some better views on that. Um, and you can do some custom variables and set up some custom reports for yourself. Any questions on visitors? Okay, well, let's look at behavior because this might be something that, I mean, beyond knowing whether people are using your website as a, uh, from a tablet or a phone or a mobile, other kind of mobile device and desktop, this one might be more interesting to you. It's like, where are they actually going on your website? So the, Chris, you said uh, web links, that's, um, that's your start page for your uh, public computers, correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. So you can see right there, that's the page and the number of page views is pretty darn high. So we know that um, that's the public computer auto, automatic thing. And maybe that's something that we can work on screening out at some point. Or you can run a visit, you can run a report and pull those, that information out. Uh, events is a popular page. That's the next most um, unique, next highest number of unique views. Interlibrary loan hours and directions, contact us, about us, kids, book a room, your library, jobs, genealogy. It's actually looking pretty good. Like you're like, hey, these these are all the sites. Um, and so for the last month, you know, 20 people went to look for and look at the suggested purchase form. Um, they went to it and then they left, but they spent two minutes on the page. Um, and that's so it looks like they may have found what they needed because they spent um, average time on the page was two minutes. And so they were on a suggested purchase and they were probably looking up the information that they needed and spent about two minutes there doing that. 
um, time on the um, on the donate to library and friends of library, and then you're getting down to um, your, the federal tax forms have arrived. Not too many people clicking through to that, but they may have not needed to click through to it. Entry pages. So this is where they started. They got to your website via this point. Again, web links, because that's the entry page for the public computers. Hours and directions. So they went directly to hours and directions and events um, and, and started there. And, and actually I should say the top, the top one there is your homepage. So um, people are entering your website through the actual homepage itself. Exit pages would be the last page that they were on on your website. So where they finished their web their website journey with you. And then looking at this with the so here, this is easier to see that in, instead of saying index here, page title says TV Scott Free Library, Merrill, Wisconsin. That's the actual page um, name, which you would be more familiar with. So this is the same thing, just that. We don't usually have a lot of site searching going on, or it may be that your search bar um, for your website is not easily found. So if people are actually looking for something on your website, I don't know that a lot of people come to a library website and then have to type in catalog because most, web, I think everybody's got their websites pretty well done, but um, it might be something to keep an eye on. Are people not searching your website because they don't need to, or are they not searching your website because they can't find a search? bar to search with. Um, outlinks, so this is where people are going to after they've accessed your website. Uh, so a lot of people come to the come to their um, the website and then um, head towards the catalog. So go to TB Scott Library and then click on catalog and go from there. They're going to Overdrive, WizCat, and then it looks like you have these are probably the quick links that you have on your um, on your homepage, I'm guessing, or on your public computers. What are they downloading? Uh, let's see. So these are the items that are being downloaded. This could be really handy. Are people actually downloading the meeting room policy? Uh, do they, they're downloading the 2022 annual report? Um, are they downloading your meeting board, board meeting minutes or not? It's a good time to good time and place to find that out. Let's see. And these are things that you're going to you're going to set up the events and the contents. Uh, returning visits over time. That's actually kind of a neat thing to look at. You know, you've got 1,800 returning visits over this period of time, uh, and your average time being spent as a returning visitors visits um, per uh, visits per visit. Visits per visit duration. Um, this is one of those things where I, I feel like um, the English as a second language in Matomo does sometimes come out. I have to stop and read some of these a little more carefully because I'm not quite sure what visits per visit duration mean, but they will try to explain it. You'll just notice there might be a little bit of English, not using English quite correctly. Um, in some of these descriptions. So uh, let's see. Um, let's see then visits um, by number, visits by visit number and visits by day since last visit. So um, some people, you know, like probably the public computers, you know, they keep visiting every day, all day. Um, and then the people who have visited yesterday and visiting again today visits a couple times a week. So frequencies. Um, oh, this is, and this one's a cool graphic. Um, I like this one because it's a little bit more of a visualization where, where people are coming in um, from these internal pages and where they're going to. So the outgoing traffic to outlinks versus um, to go, coming in from these pages and going out to other um, pieces on your website. And then um, some of your performance as far as the network time, the server time, um, the speed of your website and here. Because 
these are your websites, you are going to much better know what information is most valuable to you. Like if you're seeing something, um, uh, Fall Creek was saying that they wanted to see if their building page, their building site, uh, website, web page was being visited. And if you're noticing that it's not, like we built this page, we want people to be getting this information and it's getting a visit a week and that might be a staff member. Uh, that's This is one of those tools that you have to be able to come in here and be like, do we need to um, revamp how our website is organized because they're obviously not finding what they need. Um, this is also a good starting point for a conversation with, as staff are sitting with um, people who are trying to navigate your website at a public computer and they're not finding things, then tie that into your statistics. Like people come in asking for the catalog. And I'm seeing in here that people are usually getting to the catalog this way, but this might be an easier way. This is just a way, you know your, your library, you know your website, you know your users best. I, I can show you around the analytics, but I really can't tell you how to use it uh, because every library is a little bit different and every community experience is a little bit different. Um, if you notice there's a particular issue, we can brainstorm problems like, hey, we have a building project and we need to bring it to a, somebody's to people's attention, but they're obviously not finding that web page. Let's have a conversation and talk about some different ways to design it. That's a much more creative problem solving process at that point. Um, any questions or thoughts or things you want to know about website or other how to design our website analytics in that way. You guys think this will be a useful tool or is this just more information and is overwhelming? I think it'll be interesting. I think, um... I like the whole thing about where people are coming in at and then where they're going after whatever page they're on that. I think that could be really useful for, you know, if you had an event or something, like you said, if there was a fundraising event or something happening, you'd be like, okay, I know I'm going to put information for it in this specific place. Cause I know that's where people are mainly going. Yeah. And from that, they're kind of clicking off of certain things, perhaps I'll put something here that they can then go to for more information or something. I, th I think you could use it for a lot of different things, yeah. Cool. It, it is a lot of information, though. <laughs> <laughs> it is a lot of information. So, yes, and like Rebecca says, um, it's it can be a little overwhelming. Um, that's why really knowing what you are after with your library is going to make this a lot easier. Um, Jasmine and Carissa, um, I will get you guys logins uh, so that you will be able to access this directly because you cannot get to this through your website. So if you're listening to this recording and want to know how do I see this page for my website, um, please let me know, uh, send a help ticket and we will get you a login for your, for your analytics page. And help me out because um, Chris Schwartz was a little suspicious that library people actually wanted to use analytics. And I think, I think some of you really do. So Oops. I feel like I had something else to say. One tool, like I said, heat maps is one of those things. Does anybody, I shouldn't probably not assume that everybody knows what a heat map looks like. Um, website heat So this is an example of a, I'm just gonna click on one at random here. Uh, image in new tab, thank you. Ah, of course it's a small one. Uh, tools, size, large. So is this just tracking cursor position or what? Yes, and clicks. Um, okay. So just so that, if, if you don't know what this is, this is kind of tiny, but anyway, 
the idea here is that heat mapping shows where people are like pausing. Um, they might not be clicking, but they might be pausing and leaving their mouse or where they're moving around to. And if they're looking for things, there's, a, there's also some other things. Um, I think I've heard it called uh, rage clicking when you want to try to find something and you think this is where it's supposed to be and you're clicking on it and it just, it's not doing what you think it should. Um, so this is one of those tools. It's a paid tool. If we come up with a point where in website design, it's gonna make sense for us because where people are, are trying to go to try to find things that they're naturally going to this place, looking for something like the home button or um, a menu button. This is one of those tools that uh, can show like this one, they're just, they're just kind of all over the place. It's like, they don't really even know where to go to find anything. Um, and the, But if there's other spots where it's like nice and hot, then you know people are heading to the menus very easily, fire, um, very clearly finding the information that they're looking for. Or they have a pet who likes to just rub their nose all over everything. Right, well, and then you get, <laughs> you get the cats walking across keyboards and stuff like that, that, yeah, that's not helpful. But we can do a lot of these things too, where you can sit down with somebody at a public computer and just observe, just pay attention to, you know, like when you have to give them instructions, like they're trying to find something like your summer reading registration form and you take them to a public computer and you sit down and they're just not finding it. Those are the times to pay attention and be like, okay, what do we need to do to redesign? You don't have to have a heat mapping exercise necessarily um, to know that you need something put somewhere else on your website. And you may not know where that is, but that's where Brendan and I can help you. You can just be like, look, nobody's finding our registration form. They're all coming to the desk and making us print it off. You know, like send us that and uh, we can look at trying to get it into a, an easier place to find. Okay, well, that's what I have for the recording today. I'm going to pause recording. Um, and...